OK, I'm going to prove this lemma that I stated last time, that the dihedral angle between two mirrors in a root system can be 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and that's it. No other possibilities. So what do I mean by the angle between two mirrors? Right, and here's, a, here's an example where I've drawn two red mirrors. And uh, am I talking about this angle or this angle between them. I'm talking about the smaller angle, right? Because two mirrors at 60 degrees also form a 120 degree angle. I'm, I'm really talking about the, the, the smaller of the two angles. And how would I actually calculate the angle between two mirrors? You know, in higher dimensions, these mirrors are hyperplanes. So they're you know, very high dimensional objects. What I do is I take the vector orthogonal to a mirror and the vector orthogonal to the other mirror and I measure the angle between those two vectors and I call that the angle between the mirrors. So in a root system, the orthogonals to the mirrors are the roots, the uh, simple roots. So um, I'm really interested in the quantity alpha dot beta where alpha and beta are roots. And remember, this dot product is the killing form. Well, what I'm going to use for the proof is um, this property that we had that said if you take one root, uh, beta, and you project it orthogonally onto the line through the root alpha, what you get is a half n alpha beta times alpha, where n alpha beta is an integer. This turns out to be a very restrictive criterion. Um, so just an example, we've already seen some examples, but let me remind you, um, you know, this is part of the SU2, uh, sorry, SU3 root system. Um, here's one of the root vectors, and here's another one of the root vectors. And the point is that if I project let's say onto this vertical line, I project this other root vector onto that vertical line. What I end up with is, in this case, minus a half alpha, if this is alpha and this is beta. All right, so I'm always gonna end up with a half integer multiple of the root. So what is the projection of beta to the line through alpha? Well, I can just calculate it using Euclidean geometry. It's uh, alpha dot beta over alpha dot alpha times alpha. In other words, it's a rescaling of alpha by alpha dot beta over alpha dot alpha. One way of thinking about this is you take the component of beta in the alpha direction, that is beta dotted with the unit vector in the alpha direction, alpha over root alpha dot alpha, and then you multiply that by the unit, uh, the unit vector in the alpha direction, which is alpha over root alpha dot alpha. And if you expand that out, this is what you get. Okay, so we're saying that n alpha beta, this integer, is equal to two alpha dot beta over alpha dot alpha. And switching alpha and beta, we get n beta alpha equals two alpha dot beta over beta dot beta. So if we multiply these two guys together, what we get is n alpha beta, n beta alpha equals four alpha dot beta squared over alpha dot alpha times beta dot beta. And that is the same as four times um, cos squared of the angle between uh, these two mirrors. That's because of this usual formula that alpha dot beta is the length of alpha times the length of beta times cos of the angle between them. If you square this formula, uh, you see what you get is uh, alpha dot beta squared, and then divided by alpha dot alpha divided by beta dot beta will give you cos squared of the angle. Okay, but cos is a bounded function. Cos of phi is 
at least minus one and it's at most one and it's equal to one or minus one if and only if the two mirrors or the two vectors are collinear. So if the, it's equal to one or minus one if and only if the mirrors are the same. And we're not interested in looking at the angle between a mirror and itself, we're interested in looking at the angle between two different mirrors. So really, effectively, cos phi is between strictly between minus one and one. So four cos squared phi is, well, it's between uh, zero and four. And it could be zero, but it can't be four. And it's also an integer because it's a product of integers, right? N alpha beta and N beta alpha are both integers. Their product is an integer. And how many integers are there between zero and four, not including four? Well, um, not many. There's zero, one, two, and three. So these are the only possibilities for cos squared of the angle. And if you figure out what that means, um, sorry, four times cos squared of the angle. What, what does that mean? That means cos of phi is one of zero, um, a half, uh, one over root two, or root three over two. And these will give you the angles 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, and 30 degrees respectively. So that proves the lemma.